Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Behind the Space Bar, the podcast, the show, the experience where you learn from us, Will Doggett, Breeze Bagwell, how to become a world-class playback engineer. More Will than me, but I'm here to help you out too. I'm here to host and take us on this journey together. Hostess with the mostest. The hostess with the mostest. Yes, Reese, that's correct. I don't, I don't want to cut you off. Uh, I, I am short on time, so I, I know you have a Super few important questions. guy. Can, yeah. can, you pick, can you pick like maybe the top question for today? Yes. I don't want to rush everybody else. I'll give us plenty of time. You know, I was looking at this one because I think it goes hand in hand with a previous episode. Hopefully, Sweet. Okay. hopefully you're watching all of these together, listening to all these together, um, either on uh, Apple Podcast or Spotify, watching us on YouTube. But um, you even alluded to this one just a little bit, but I think it's so important that I wanted okay. to mention it one more time. Okay. Um, this question, and I'm again, I'm sorry, guys, with the names. I apologize if I butcher it. It's not because I don't like you. It's because I'm a, a dumb Southerner from America that's probably going to mess this all up. Okay, and Nilton, Anilton, sorry, okay. it's from Instagram. Um, so it but he's got with a, an A. It starts with an A. Yeah. All right. Let's say Mr. A. Mr. A. All right. Here's Mr. his question. Okay. Can you help me with a question about the Play Audio One U, U interface? I know you can. Uh, I'm buying it to use with the artists I work for here. I want to know if I can send time code through the interface from A to B to keep them synchronized. Okay. So we got a question about synchronization. We got a question about time code. And we got a question about the best interface on planet Earth, the Play Audio One U. Yeah. What do you got? Man. If, have we not? I've, I'm like completely asking you a question that's behind the scenes baseball. I feel like I answered this question. Did I not answer this question? You more or less did. But I, again, the reason why I brought it up is because I want to focus on it was, I think you answered it in, con, uh, in combination with a broader topic. So I want to yeah, get very, yeah, very, yeah. very, okay. very specific. Cool. Very specific. Okay. About, and maybe we need to take a tiny step back because this is something that we talked about in boot camp. This was new to me whenever I joined boot camp. Let's just start at this point as a jumping off, and then you go from there. Will, what is time code for those yeah. of us that are uninitiated? Yeah, that's really good. So time, and this is perfect because I think next week in boot camp we're getting into time code, so it's very fresh in my mind. So uh, time code feels magical. Uh, all it is is a just stream of data that can either be audio or MIDI. And the way that it works is it synchronizes the timeline of your playback software and your stems to a timeline that is video or uh, lighting, right? Or pyro or anything that syncs uh, time code that scene changes on your console. The way to think about time code, you may have seen uh, SMPTE, I think I said that right, Society of Motion Picture technical editors I always have to look it up i can never remember what that yeah. is. um it's basically a standards body that got together and said we need a way to make sure we can keep all our stuff in sync um uh, there's two main flavors of time code ltc and mtc ltc is audio all you need to know when it comes to working with ltc there's like two really important things number one what's the frame rate we're working with this has nothing to do with the frame rate of your video or the content. It's what's the frame rate that that particular department is looking for. Make sure you have that frame rate. And then number two, what hour are we starting on? And so within time code is there's, there's data embedded, right? So there's hour, minute, second frame. I think I said that right. Hour, minute, second frame. And so song two, probably starts on hour two song three probably starts on hour three and so what's really really clear um that i we talk about this often the number one mistake i see with time code 98 percent of the time is just miscommunication hey why is this song triggering song number four well it's because we don't have a one source of truth we don't have one place we can go so that everyone can look at it and say that s this particular song should be this time code Right. Uh -huh. So um, that's essentially what time code is. It keeps two timelines in sync. Okay. The way that we most often use that is uh, I send time code out of my interface to um, uh, production land, and that's often video and lighting. And they receive that time code and they program based on a timeline, based on references that I've created using my Playback Pro template, one click LTC references. And uh, they program to that, they receive time code and it keeps things perfectly in sync so that night after night, show after show, it's a consistent show, hits are perfectly timed. Okay. So um, 
let's see if we could dissect Mr. A's question a little bit here. Okay. So one, can I send time cut out of a play audio one? You, yes, absolutely. That's the way the majority of people that are on tours are doing it is they're sending what, you know, time code LTC. We kind of use those simultaneously. SMPT, uh, TC, um, uh, all mean the same thing. Um, uh, the, that's just an audio file. What's called a stripped audio file, striped audio file, not stripped, striped audio file. Um, and uh, you load it into an audio track and you send it out of a separate output of your interface, right? Uh -huh. So really important concept here. I remember doing a SMPT tutorial years and years ago. In fact, I believe it's the one Ableton links to from their site. Uh, I've, uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. But as I was talking about it, someone had this great comment, which was this kind of pure, innocent comment where they said, yeah, but now I got white noise all over my track. And I thought, oh, yeah, like that's those are beautiful comments to me as a teacher, because sometimes I forget what I've forgotten. And what right. I mean by that is I think it's common knowledge. It wasn't common knowledge to me until I started. And it wasn't yes. like no knowledge till I did it. So important concept with Simpty, separate audio track. Make sure your audio track is unwarped. Some of the other day texted me and said, hey, I actually warped Simpty and we changed tempo and it was fine. I'm glad it was fine for them. Don't do it. I haven't done it personally, but a uh, separate output, right? Really, really important mm -hmm. there. Okay. Um, the, the other aspect of this and re stop me or kind of help me guide me as the host here. I yeah. believe I kind of answered this portion on the previous podcast. So I'm yeah. going to make this really short. You asked me to expand or contrast based on this. But um, well, the the question of, can I send it from A machine to keep it in sync with B machine? Uh, yeah. Number one, Ableton does not sync to LTC, it syncs to MTC. So what that means is you would have to convert your audio LTC to MTC so that Ableton could sync to it. Number two, the way Ableton currently handles sync, or at least the last time I tried this, I haven't really dug into this in 12 and they're, they're improving some things there, but as if you stop receiving code from A, your B machine stops it. At least the last time I checked, it does not what's called free will, which means if time code stops, it just keeps going, right? That makes sense. That's what you would want it to do. Eventually it catches up and it syncs up and it's good. Uh, last time I checked, Ableton does not do that. So number one, you can't sync your B machine to your A machine using time code. Number two, uh, uh, you would have to have it be MTC. Number three, you wouldn't want to do that in the first place because if your A machine stops sending MTC to your B machine, your B machine would stop. Completely negates the point. So I believe I said this on the previous episode. We'll link to, if we have a tutorial, I'm sure we do. We'll maybe take sure. something up. Uh, the way to do this, Mr. A, is you're going to have a MIDI controller that you plug into the USB host port of your Play Audio 1U, number one. Number two, you're going to make a USB host port reservation for that MIDI controller. And the default configuration is that that MIDI controller is going to be split to both of your machines. All of your communication on both machines is going to happen from that MIDI controller. So what that means is when you select the song, you do it with your MIDI controller. It selects on both machines. Press play. It presses play on both your machines. Now, the mechanics of how that happens is you could MIDI map that controller. If you're using Ableset and using an Oaktone controller, it can automatically map for you, which is super powerful. Um, uh, if you're using some sort of setless management, you're probably going to want to map to play, stop, a previous song, next song, uh, set list, um, uh, able set. Uh, I use a layer box. And so my layer box has a lot of cool functionality built into it. Uh, two ports that go directly to my machines, but, uh, Mr. A, that's a great question. And Reese, that's a great question to camp on a little more because a number one gives us, I, honestly, guys, this episode's eight minutes. This is like a miracle. So I need to shut up so we can be done yeah. under 10 minutes, but that really truly that the name of this episode could be, I'm not suggesting a show title, but it could Here be everything go. you need to know about time code in less than 10 minutes. In fact, less than five minutes, right? We've yeah, got a lesson on the site called everything you need to know in less than 10 minutes. That's everything you need to know. Now, some people say, yeah, but in the U S use this time code in the blah, blah, blah. Everybody I've ever I've ever worked with just says use this frame rate and I just roll with it, right? So every piece of information you need to know I gave to you there earlier. And then number two, Mr. A, great question to give us a little clarity on um, how to sync multiple machines together and how to create a rock solid redundant rig. Uh, Mr. A, the last thing I can suggest to you that's going to be really beneficial if you want to continue to grow your skills to become a world class playback engineer uh, is to head to from studio to stage.com slash template. Download our free template there. 
um, uh, it's the best resource I can give you because it's the template that is the foundation of the template, the very same template that I use uh, on stage with the seven time Grammy award winning artist uh, that I uh, kind of built and tweaked over the past two years working with uh, Grammy award winning level artists. Um, and it's completely free to you. It's going to get you started. And in addition to that, you're going to get uh, my playback prep and my playback program method course, uh, which is going to teach you how to use it and teach you how to get started with playback. So Mr. A, fantastic question. Thank you for submitting it. Reese, thanks for bringing it back up as a way to dig in a little further and a little deeper. And um, number three, Reese, let everyone know where they could go, where they should go. Uh, to uh, get their question answered on the next episode of Behind the Space Bar. Absolutely. Follow us on Instagram, from studio to stage, IG. DM us those questions. We're going to answer them here on the podcast. We might even answer them twice, because more or less we have hit on this topic. This, you're 100% right, Will. You nailed it. We have discussed this before. I think sometimes um, it's a question of, you know, some people are looking for yes or no. Some people are looking yeah. for implementation. Um, hard to do implementation necessarily on a podcast, uh, but I think that's where the free resources come in. Um, that could maybe be your little taste. Like I like the way this Will Dog guy explains things and helps me implement my solutions here on stage, because I'm telling you, I've gone through it. I've done the process. It's a game changer, guys. Get on board. You're, you're not going to regret it one bit. So it. thanks, Will. It. It's been yeah, good. Thanks, this is, hey, guy, I pat ourselves on the back. Shortest episode we've done yet. And we still crush it with some good content. I'm I'm celebrating today. Today's a win. Might even call it. Going home. You, uh, <laughs> all, all of those, all of you that have commented and said, you talk too much, shut up, get to the point. Uh, you can, and I mean this in the biblical sense, suck it, my friend, because that was under 10 minutes. So there you go. There we go. There go. Thanks, guys. Show title. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>